in this session we will start discussion about the concepts of object databases which belongs to uh, the second module of uh, advanced database concepts so so far we were discussing about the various uh, database architectures uh, that includes the uh, parallel databases distributed databases and traditional client server uh, or centralized database systems and now we are going to specifically focus on a newer category of databases which is usually called as uh, object oriented databases which is a, a type of data model present in relation with the uh, database uh, concepts so in this uh, chapter we will be uh, initially focusing on some of the basic concepts related to the object oriented uh, uh, data bases so uh, uh, before that we will see uh, as you know the traditional data models which we were following uh, in our previous uh, normal dbms subjects were like uh, a hierarchical model then we had a network model then we are having the most commonly used one which is called as relational model so this was the history of the creation of various data models so what is this uh, hierarchical model hierarchical model was the initial type of data models that was created in uh, air before 60s where we are having a root uh, from where we are creating uh, different hierarchy elements and whenever a new data is to be added into the data model it will be added into the tail end of this uh, tree like structure so every time some data will be appended at the tail end of the uh, hierarchy uh, in this particular model so it is like a parent child relationship so there will be a root parent to which we'll be having some number of childs and from those uh, childs uh, we can connect some other datas uh, into the tail end so that we can form a hierarchy of elements so that was the initial data model uh, that was present in early 60s but uh, later uh, there was another uh, data model which was uh, slightly popular which is called as network data model uh, which uh, deals with uh, the network data model deals with a different concept where all the data all the data that is to be uh, placed into our or whatever purpose we are using those data all this data are connected to a single network so this is slightly different from hierarchy model so we are having a single network to which all the data are being connected so later when if we wish to add one more data uh, what we are doing is the data will be added into the same network so similarly we can have the gathering of a number of data uh, into a model called as network data model so this was popular during the mid of uh, 60s but the usage of this data model was also a difficult uh, task to maintain this model so that is why there was a popular model which was introduced in uh, 1970 which is called as relational data model uh, which uh, we were also dealing with in our normal dbms subject so the relational data model is dealing with a structure that is having a, a set of uh, rows and columns and uh, the data are represented in this uh, uh, cells present inside this uh, table like structure so as you know the row actually will be having a number of sub portions which is called as the columns in database terms these are called as attributes the different uh, columns are called as attributes and different rows are called as tuples and for each attribute will be having some value present in each of these different cells present in the relational data model so most of the application development softwares are following some databases uh, that follows the uh, relational data model concept because it was the easiest way to maintain data in the 
form of rows and columns and accessing the data from the rows uh, on, based on each individual attributes or sometimes if you wish to access the entire tuple itself we need to access the entire tuple along with the attribute uh, values of that particular tuple so uh, in many database systems like uh, mysql or uh, oracle or several earlier database systems were focusing on uh, the implementation of relational data data model concept so these were the traditional data models and among these we are very familiar with relational databases uh, because mo most of the uh, application development we are using the table like structure which is called as relational data model now here we are going to discuss about the next data model which is called as object oriented uh, data model o o data models object oriented data models which was introduced uh, in the mid of 90s so you can see early uh, 60s and mid 60s uh, languages were not very popular but relational model was introduced when we had the introduction of C and C++ during the 70s and 80s. Now you can see that the object oriented data model concept was introduced in the mid of 90s. As you know the initial stage of 90s was the uh, where we, we are having the introduction of the language uh, like uh, Java. Before that we had C++ but C++ was also uh, based on C language which is a normal uh, structured language but uh, 90s after the introduction of Java we were more focusing on the object oriented concepts and uh, even now also the object orientation concept used in Java is very popular in many application areas. So from that time uh, we had the concept or uh, the data model which was called as object oriented data models. Now what are the reasons why we are changing from our traditional relational model into or some other uh, from uh, other models into the object oriented data models. So there are basically three reasons when we need to have the access to data for complex applications it is always better to use an object oriented uh, data basis so as you know like object oriented programming language we are focusing on objects similarly the data are considered in object oriented data models in the form of objects only so objects normally represent a real world entity so any data can be easily connected to the real world entity so that is why uh, we can uh, use these objects as data in uh, various complex applications so we'll be discussing in detail about the usages of these uh, objects and uh, the working of those in uh, different applications in our uh, later slides so this is the first reason why we are uh, having the concept called as uh, object oriented databases now the second reason is uh, the need for additional data modeling features so uh, every time the traditional models were not uh, uh, not uh, useful or that was not uh, applicable for all types of uh, programs that we were following in our previous days so uh, we require some more features so that cannot be or that was not present in the traditional data models like object oriented features uh, were added into the uh, object oriented database concepts so these features can be incorporated in the newly created object oriented database system so that is the second reason why the object oriented databases were uh, or that was uh, created for the um, data related applications and the third reason was the increase used of or popularity of object oriented programming languages in the later 90s so initially 70s 80s and all we were focusing on uh, traditional uh, c like structured languages uh, but uh, later 90s after the invention of java we were having more uh, popularity on the object oriented programming languages and most of the applications were developed using object oriented programming languages so 
because of this popularity the uh, the programmers or people were more uh, calm or they were very familiar with object oriented concepts so uh, the introduction of object oriented databases was uh, very useful for those pop people who are uh, very familiar with object oriented programming languages now uh, the different uh, commercial object oriented database products uh, uh, like uh, it was uh, there in 90s and all there was a number of object oriented database products available but uh, in initially whatever uh, products was available that was not uh, uh, having any impact on any uh, data management uh, system available in that particular time now we'll see the history of object oriented models and object oriented systems as you know uh, these were the initial object oriented languages in 70s we had a language called as simula which was the first object oriented programming language then in 70s uh, there was a language called as small talk then uh, after c we had a new object oriented version of c which was called as c++ which was very popular in 1980s and later in 90s and 2000s and even now we are having the popularity of java because java is very much applicable for the uh, web related uh, programs or web applications which are very common nowadays now uh, these are some of the experimental systems which was created based on object oriented models so some names are given uh, we, we are not able to even remember these names but still just look at some of the name exper experimental object oriented systems that was developed early, earlier one was called as orion by mcc labs another object oriented system which was called as iris uh, which was introduced by hp labs similarly uh, open odb by ta company then ode is another object oriented system which was developed at att bell labs Similarly, Postgres, which is slightly popular, uh, Postgres is also an experimental system uh, by uh, UCB, uh, which was another popular object-oriented experimental system, and uh, another system which was called as Encore or Observer uh, by uh, or that was introduced by uh, the Brown, which was another uh, firm that focuses on the object oriented database system so these were some of the experimental object oriented systems that was developed earlier now these are the commercial object oriented database products that was actually released uh, uh, so you, you you may remember two or three names of object oriented databases so even if we are having these object oriented databases available still for several applications we are using uh, relational data models only because of several difficulties uh, with uh, the usages of object oriented databases uh, but uh, there are uh, certain situations where object oriented systems are very much useful uh, like when we are handling the storage of huge amount of data uh, like uh, the data storage in uh, youtube or se several streaming sites and all uh, it, it is always a better choice to use object oriented databases but other data related applications and all even now also several firms are following normal traditional relational data model itself so you can see some of the object oriented database products that was uh, commercially used one is uh, ontos then another one is gemstone so all these were uh, object oriented databases which was uh, some of them were used for some specific purpose only for specific applications only some of them are uh, commonly used with several applications like o2 and all uh, o2 is also called as ardent similarly another uh, system which is called as objectivity then one more system uh, object store also called as Epsilon then versant poet and jasmine which is also called as fujitsu or gm so just try to remember two or three names of these uh, commercial object oriented database products it is just like uh, oracle uh, 
O2 is an object-oriented database system. Oracle is a relational database system. Just like that only. Just to remember some of the names associated with object-oriented database system. Now you will see the overview of object-oriented concepts. So why we are going for these object-oriented concepts and what are the different features of object-oriented databases. Uh, and which all situations we are using the concept of uh, object orientation in databases. So the main uh, purpose or claim of uh, uh, having the usage of object oriented uh, databases uh, is because uh, it tried to uh, maintain a direct correspondence uh, between the real world and database objects. So as you know object orientation objects are always dealing with any real time or re real world entities like a student a student can be considered as an object with a number of features a particular student he can be considered as an object but in relational databases a student is represented in a tuple by specifying all his features in that particular row similarly if we are considering a single student as an object and the object with a certain number of features uh, it will give more meaning because it is more associated with the real world student concept so if you take a particular student from a class uh, when we are using this object concept for a particular student x it can be always better to have the concept of object there rather than the usage of representation of that student with a tuple that is stored as some values in a table. So that concept, the association between this real world thing and the database objects uh, or the correspondence between these two uh, was the main uh, reason why the object oriented databases was uh, becoming or that was being introduced for uh, the purpose of uh, database uh, or the data access by using different database systems. So uh, as you know objects are having several features like they do not lose their integrity and identity so every, every time every object is having its own identity and it will keep its data in uh, or the it will be uh, it will uh, follow the integrity uh, and also you can easily identify the uh, object by looking into its features or by directly accessing the object by specifying the name of that object etc. So every time when we discuss anything uh, related to object oriented uh, databases we can have a connection with object oriented programming language because in those languages for whatever be the language that we use we are using objects. So the same object conceptually we are considering here also in database. So like the, we'll be having several objects available and these objects are stored in, uh, in, the, in the secondary storage in object format not in a table format. So that is a difference there. So every properties of object oriented language and its objects will be applicable for our object oriented database also. So what is actually an object? An object in the database concept, an object can have two components. One is the state or value and second one is the behavior. For example, if you take an object oriented language, it's in that's it is a variable and it is having a value that is 10 which can be called as a state the state of that particular object and behavior or operation means the same object will be having some operations like for example uh, a function can be considered as uh, an operation a draw so this is an object which consists of a state called as it's with a value 10 and which is having an operation called as draw by using this object we can draw something so every object will be having a state or value and it may also have some behaviors not only a single behavior it may have a number of behaviors which is usually called as operations in languages it is usually called as functions state or value in languages we are calling it as variable and its value 
so similar to program variable in programming language uh, so these two are similar except that it will typically have a complex data structure as well as uh, specific operations defined by the programmer so it is similar to the programming language variable uh, uh, this it's even this function can also be considered as a variable but which is having a big body that is a difference of function and a normal variable but the difference is the object oriented uh, or the object will be having a complex data structure complex data it is so this uh, this is the object which is having a complex data structure means its structure like uh, in uh, in in c++ object will be having a set of properties which are already defined in its class so like a number of variables a number of functions so its uh, data structure is complex because more variables and more functions are associated within that single object that is why it is called as it is having a complex data structure with a specific number of operations which are defined by the programmer so similar to draw we can have a a number of operations or functions that can be defined inside the um, uh, object which which is usually uh, defined in normal object oriented language which is usually defined inside the class so classes are usually the building block for the objects so similar concept is followed in our object oriented database object also now in object oriented databases objects may have an object structure of arbitrary complexity so with different complexity we can have simple objects or we can have an object with more complexity also you know to contain all the necessary information that describes the object so we will see the examples of objects in our uh, uh, later slides so different with different complexities with simple complexity or a, a, a means larger complexity will be having different types of objects uh, are available with different object structures that depends on the situation uh, in contrast in normal database system uh, uh, what what is happening is the information about an object is normally scattered over many relations so for example a single student so for example this is student object all the uh, structure related to that student will be there with that single object itself so that is in the case of object concept but in normal uh, databases in relations so some uh, academic information will be present in one table some non academic details are present in some other table some uh, university informations are present in some other table then uh, some additional extra curricular activity descriptions are there in some other table library informations are there in some other table then office informations are there in some other table now if you want to access a particular student information we need to have the communication between all these relations that is the problem with traditional databases but in uh, object databases that single object will be associated with all the operations or features uh, belongs to that particular object so that is the advantage of uh, object uh, and uh, a normal relational database system now the internal structure of an object in object oriented programming languages includes Uh, uh the instance variables so in c++ or java we know the variables which are declared inside uh, the object as part of a class in the case of uh, c++ java we are having instance variable which will be holding the values uh, that defines the state of the object so if there is a class uh, class class a class a which consist of Uh, some variables like h index index and assume that which is having a value zero for example so index equal to zero so this is an instance variable which is present in the class a so if you create an object a small a for example 
this is an object which is having an instance variable its name is that is that variable whose value is 0 initially now later I can assign a value a dot h equal to some other value so every instance this value will be varying so an instance variable is uh, have, which, which will be holding the value of each object so for example a student object for example student name is an instance variable for uh, first instance student name will be a for example for second instance for another object the uh, student name will be different for a, a third object the student name will be different for each object will be having different instance uh, variables or values available so that decides the internal state of the object now an instance variable is similar to the concept of an attribute in relational databases okay so in relational database table for example this is the attribute called as name for example this column represents so which is equivalent to an instance variable in uh, a, an object oriented database also in relational one table for example name an attribute name here an instance variable name or h whatever it be so an instance variable in the object oriented database is similar to the concept of attribute in uh, relational databases except that the instance variables may be encapsulated within the object and uh, it may not be visible to external user so the difference with uh, the object oriented system is that the instance variables which are associated with the objects uh, are encapsulated so all these in informations are encapsulated or they are wrapped around into that single unit associated with the object and may not be directly visible to the user but these attribute relations are directly visible to the user in the case of relational databases so object orientation the storage of data in the concept of object oriented uh, uh, data storage concept the data will be having more security because the data is usually hidden from the external users now similarly like instance variables we have seen the first element of an object is an instant variable which is similar to an attribute now we can see similarly uh, uh, it also have some operations so some operations which can also be uh, defined inside the object other than instant variable we can have some operations also similar to functions can also be included so that uh, within the object itself we can have some dealing with the instance variable present in that particular object so after the inclusion of this operations also into along with the instance variable we can have the uh, property which is called as encapsulation which is one of the major uh, feature related to the object oriented programming languages as well as object oriented database concepts so uh, when we include operations also we are actually satisfying the concept of encapsulation so while uh, implementing this encapsulation the uh, we are including uh, operations so for this operations we need to have two uh, major parts one is called as the signature or the interface of the operation which is usually called as the uh, what do you say the function header when we write a function uh, we need to have a function header which is usually called as the function signature or interface which is used to identify that particular function so here for identifying an operation we are using a, a, an operation signature or interface which is equivalent to the name of the operation and if there is any uh, parameter available that to includes the signature or interface so it specifies the operation name and the parameters similar to the usage of uh, C++ or Java functions and the second part of uh, this operation is the method or the body we specifies the internal body what operation to be done that is specified inside or after the uh, specification of signature will be having the body of that particular uh, operation that specifies what is to be done on that particular operation 
now operations can be invoked by passing a message uh, to an object so operations can be invoked by passing a message to an object which is usually called as a function call passing an object uh, uh, a message to an object uh, which will happen during the call to that particular function so while calling that we'll be using the operation name and the parameters like if you are having a sum method which is already defined in c++ or java we need to call that function like sum of we can provide some uh, actual value uh, which is in the form of parameters that will invoke the message passing to that particular operation to implement or execute the body of uh, that operation that, that is the object then executes the method for that particular operation so in object oriented databases similar to object oriented languages the method invocation or call to the method uh, uh, will be always done by the object like object dot uh, object dot object dot uh, the name of the function for example sum which will be called object dot sum so that will be happening so uh, every object so o1 o2 whatever be the object that we are having by using object name dot the name of the operation that is a signature along with the parameter will be having the message uh, passing happens and uh, this operation will be executed and it will be some operation related to this particular object for example student student one dot sessional with some parameters will be invoking the sessional operation which may evaluate the sessional of that particular student so similarly the same thing can be repeated for other student object also now this encapsulation permits uh, the modification of the uh, internal structure of an object so uh, when we call an operation using this object automatically uh, the internal state based on this operation the internal state of this object or value may also uh, change it will all, uh, also the implementation of its operation uh, without disturbing the external programs that invoke these operations so from wherever we are calling this operation some internal changes will also be applied without affecting any our uh, external area from where we are invoking these uh, object related operations so external portions are hidden from uh, the access to the or the changes state changes that is affecting inside the object so it won't be uh, uh, there won't be any disturbance to the external programs during that uh, changes applied to the internal structure of the object Now similarly uh, some of the object oriented systems will provide uh, the capabilities for dealing with uh, different versions of same object so there are some situations where the same object like o1 will be having different versions also maybe the same object will be having some status today the same object uh, o1 will be having a different status on a different day so some of the object oriented system will maintain the history of that on different days status of that particular objects so it will be maintaining different versions of the same object uh, it, which is usually required for design and engineering applications so not all the object oriented uh, database system supports this but some of the systems are supporting the storage of different versions of the same object itself Uh, for example an old old version of an object that represents a tested and verified design should be retained until the new version is tested and verified so for several uh, reference purposes we are maintaining the earlier version of the object which was already created once uh, up to maybe a change happens to that object that will be retained in the system it is very crucial for the designs in manufacturing uh, process control architecture and several software systems uh, the maintenance of the different versions of objects now uh, another concept so we were discussing about objects in detail which consist of uh, the 
um, uh, instance variables and the second one is the operation operations again divided into the signature and the uh, parameters and its body in signature and body now we will discuss about operator polymorphism which is another object oriented concept as you know polymorphism polymorphism multiple forms multiple forms for the same thing so it refers to an operation's ability to be applied to different types of objects the same thing can be so the same operation can be done by using the same thing on different objects the same operation will be applied to uh, object 1 and object 2 same operations can be applied to object 1 and object 2 the same thing can be done that means the same operation will be up working on object 1 the same operation which will be working on object 2 also the ability to be applied to different types of objects so uh, polymorphism means taking more than one form the same thing that does two things or more than one thing by using the same set of operations so in this situation uh, it is similar to c++ polymorphism itself an operation name may refer in several implementation so a, a single operation name for example uh, in c++ if you take if you are having an operation sum we will be having one body for sum of uh, integer numbers we can have uh, the same sum it can be written for the sum of some uh, complex numbers or we can have uh, another sum uh, which will define the sum of uh, some uh, floating point numbers so we are doing different operations but on the same method name so in different situation it will be working in different ways so the same sum is taking more than one form so that means it will be having different implementations or distinct implementations each implementations are different it depends on the type of objects it is applied to depends on what our parameter what our object or we, that we are passing through this parameter of uh, the uh, operation so this is uh, this feature is usually called as operator overloading uh, operator overloading can be like uh, an operator can be overloaded the same operator can be given different names uh, similarly uh, operator can also be like an operation overloading also or function overloading also like sum can be used in different ways plus can be used in different ways so both are together considered as operator overloading here it is just like function overloading or generally overloading in C++ or Java Now we will uh, see some other features of object oriented databases like uh, object identity, object structure and type constructors. Object identity, object structure and type constructors. So as you know these are the specific features associated with object oriented databases. Uh, uh, everything is related to object oriented basic concepts but there are some differences in the case of these terms that we are using with object oriented databases so first one is the uh, unique identity for that we are using object identity so in an object oriented database system it provides a unique identity to all the independent objects stored in the database so every data present in the object oriented database will be identified by a unique identity so every individual object will be having an id now this unique identity is typically implemented by using a system automatic generated uh, object identifier which is usually called as oid in object oriented databases object identifier so whatever objects are being created in object oriented databases automatically the system will be generating a corresponding object id now what are the properties of this object id the main property of an object id is it is immutable what is this immutable if for example one id like i1 i1 was created for example i1 was the object identity that was created this i1 will be remained forever even after some time that object was removed from the system then also 
the same name i1 will not be assigned to any other any other object some other name will be given like i2 the same i1 will be part of history which was already being deleted but this name will remain forever for that deleted object uh, with the same name itself the same name will not be repeated for any other objects whatever that is created later in the uh, object oriented system that is specifically the object id value of a particular object should not change uh, second thing is whenever we create an object id it will always remain that id itself it will not remain uh, changed that means it preserves the entity of the real world object uh, that is being represented even after that is being removed from the system a unique identification is given lifelong for any object that is what why it is called as uh, object id is immutable so uh, object identity we have seen so every object uh, may be a simple object or a complex object whatever object present in an object oriented database will be having an object identity a system uh, defined or system generated object identity with immutable property will be available for all the objects now the next point is object identity is over now next point is type constructors type constructors actually by using these two will form the object structure okay so the type constructors means uh, that is another important point in object oriented databases uh, the state that we have already seen the state value of a particular object uh, of a complex object may be constructed from other objects or by using some other values by using some type constructors so the value generation if object one is an object if i want to produce some value for these objects it is just like usage of a data type in c how the value of o1 can be generated in C++ for example it can be created by using an integer type it can be created by using another class type it can be created by using any float type it can be created by using so by using any traditional data type or by using another class type we can define the data structure of this particular uh, variable similarly the object structure will be decided based on type constructors so you can simply consider type constructor is similar to uh, the data types or data structures which are applied to uh, the variables in other languages so how we can define the value what is the value what is the structure of an object that will be decided by the type constructors which are associated with those objects so what are those constructors so the three most commonly or basic constructors which are part of objects are atom tuple and set three basic type constructors are atom tuple and set what do you mean by atom means atom means to represent a single value for example uh, uh, h is equal to 10 h is having a value 10 atomic value that is called as atom a single value of uh, traditional type maybe a traditional type or system type or a name is equal to some name which is an atomic value a basic individual value then what is tuple tuple means h h will be another tuple with some more attribute value pairs for example uh, a name attribute is there a name for uh, uh, a student which is again a tuple means which is again divided into uh, first name middle name and last name so name its type constructor is tuple because it is again divided into first name middle name and last name so name will be formed by using a type constructor that is called as tuple if it is required 
Now the third one is a set. Now, for example, a location. You want to rep represent a location. So a location will be having uh, maybe uh, the same bank will be having different locations. One, two, three. A set of locations means a set of values are associated with that particular object. There we can use a set. A set means the value will not will not be uh, repeated. The value will not be repeated means a set uh, if a is there once a will not be repeated again. A set of all values which are stored in that single list that is called as set. So I have given an example like to represent a set of locations or any set of values or a set of objects whatever it be. So uh, these are the three basic constructors used with uh, objects. Uh, these are the three basic type constructors. Along with that we are using other constructors also which are list, bag and array. What is this list? List is similar to set only difference is that list is uh, having an order. List, list of some values are there but they will be in some order. Then a bag, bag is another uh, constructor which is also similar to set only difference in, in set we will be having uh, uh, you, uh, distinct values. The same value will not be repeated. But in the case of bag the value can be repeated. That is only difference between set and bag. Then array is also similar to set but here also the only difference is set there is no boundary being set any number of values can be added or into list also we can have any number of values but for array we will be having a boundary index maximum index will be set an array is an order it is similar to list but will be having a boundary maximum index up to a particular index only we can have the value that is permitted so these are the six type constructors present in object oriented databases atom atom for representing individual values like a roll number a name uh, a particular department number etc a tuple uh, represent uh, a particular um, object with uh, another set of tuples which further that is being divided into uh, a number of tuples like a name can be divided into first name middle name and last name or we can have similar any any we will see some examples later and third one is set uh, set which deals with a set of values with uh, distinct values the same value will not be repeated again example location then list is similar list similar to set uh, thing is it is an uh, there will be an order then bag is also similar to set only difference is uh, here uh, the value may be repeated the value is not distinct and next one is array where we will be having uh, a list of values in order but there will be a maximum boundary set for array now uh, the set list and array set list and array and also bag all these are generally called as collection types because it holds more than one values <laughs> collection types type constructors that is set list bag and array these four are called as collection types similarly tuple type is usually called as a structure type that defines another structure tuple type a tuple means for example a name is an attribute name is the property of an object which is a its type is tuple means which is a structure type it is further divided into different uh, subdivisions so for example here name first name first name will be an atom a single value middle name will be an atom a single value third name will be an atom so that is the way how we are defining the properties so in order to create different objects every object will be having a type constructor type constructors like atom to put and set these are the basic constructors and other constructors like list bag and arrays are also used so we are having collection types and structure type now the atom constructor uh, 
is used to represent all basic atomic values so that is so, uh, so atom is not part of collection or structure type which is used to represent a single atomic value such as an integer value a real value or a character string or a boolean value or any other basic data types that the system supports directly any 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 basic values like in a language when we are using an integer float char etc etc that direct value any direct data type value is represented by using uh, atom data type or uh, type constructors so uh, that is all about the basics of uh, object oriented databases the basic concepts of object oriented databases we have seen some properties like objects uh, the features of objects then we have seen polymorphism then uh, encapsulation inclusion of operation uh, in terms of signature and method body then we have seen uh, the uh, object identity type constructors and object structures along with various uh, type constructors uh, and that is all about the basics basic requirements for an object oriented databases uh, now in the next session uh, in the next video we will be uh, taking an example and by using the example we will see how these type constructors how objects are being represented uh, in comparison with the relational data model how these different type constructors can be used how we can have an object uh, how we can have the representation of an entire object structure and how we can have the operations that are included within that object structure etc that we will see in our next video thank you